morning, everyone. Today is Sunday, and I am going to be running some errands this morning. We have a friend that's coming over, and I am going to go get a few groceries today, get a few things that I need for the house, and then when I come home, I have a list of things that need to be done. Um, first of all, the biggest thing is to be ready for my book club meeting, which is tomorrow. So I need to make sure I have everything in my bag and ready to go because I'm not exactly a morning person to put everything together and I will forget something. Um, that's usually how it rolls. <laughs> um, but anyhow, it is another whopping hot day. Yesterday, I spent the entire day cutting grass. I had to do it in intervals because it was so hot. Um, I think it's actually hotter today than it was yesterday. So yesterday was 94, but the heat index was through the roof. And it's like the air is so thick, you can't even breathe it. It is, it is horrendous. But anyhow, um, we're getting through it. Our house is air-conditioned. We got plenty of cold drinks, so we're making it through just like everybody else. But unfortunately, I do have to go out today because today is the only viable day to go out because I have a very busy first of the week. And as far as I know, I'm getting company this week. I don't know, but I'm going to plan as if I am having company this week. And then... Um, Whenever they get here, I'll be ready regardless. Uh, so today, like I said, we're going to be going to uh, run some errands. And then when I get home, uh, my goal is to take everything out of the refrigerator and wipe it down. I'm going to, fingers crossed, I am going to buy um, uh, a large amount of hamburger meat and I am going to repackage it. And put that in a freezer. And I'm also going to go ahead and bake up some meatballs. And I'm going to put those in the freezer. So that when I get company, all I have to do is take those meatballs out. Put it in the crock pot. Add my sauce. And in three hours, we have dinner. So, um, easy, easy, easy. And that is the way um, things need to roll. Because I'm telling you, it is just too hot to have your ovens on. For a very long period of time unless you're doing something really early in the morning or late in the evening so i have been sitting here with my headphones on um it is about 10 to 10 and our friend is supposed to be here around 10. um he's usually here on time usually what happens is he sends me a text saying on my way um so i'm just sitting here i'm ready to go um so I'm just reading, actually sneaking, and reading next month's book that is picked out for the book club. And it is a good one. So far, I am on chapter 10. So for me to be that far along this quickly uh, means that it is a very good book. Um, I'm not 100% sure exactly what the title is. But it is a book. I uh, think it's called How I See It. Um, How I Seen It, maybe. Anyways, it's may it's a book put out by Patty Davis. If you're not familiar with Patty Davis, Patty Davis was Ronald Reagan's daughter. And it's kind of a tell-all behind the scenes. Um, it's kind of <laughs> does not paint. Uh, Ronald Reagan or Nancy very well, I, uh, I'll be honest. Um, but uh, it is definitely her view and her take on things that happened in her home and the age that she was and the things that she saw. And so far, I have really enjoyed it. I think that next month, however, her brother, if I'm not mistaken, okay, her brother... I think his name is Michael. I have to look that up. Uh, has a book. So I think what we're going to do is, is read this book, which is Patty's View. And then we'll read her brother's book. And we'll kind of 
put them together in a book club and discuss what we think might not be true, maybe. Maybe what we think is true. Maybe we think that things are embellished. I'm not sure, but you guys have been wanting to know what I'm reading. And so, yes, I'm reading, um, I think it's called How I Seen It by Patty Davis. Hopefully, I am saying that right. I will look it up here on my iPad and screenshot it for you guys on here so you can see the title of the book. I'm reading it on Bard Mobile, which is a audible book site for people who are visually impaired and blind. And um, so it makes things really convenient for me because I can actually pop in my wireless headphones and do what I need to do here in house while I am reading the book for the book club. Because, like, I think I put in a video before. I'm not a type of person to lay down in the bed and read because that's not going to work for me. Because as soon as I get in that bed, I'm out. I am a goner. I am asleep and I am history. So, um, the only way I'm going to read a book is if I'm upright and like this morning, wide awake, I've had my coffee, I'm dressed, I'm ready to go. And that's the only way I'm going to take in a book. <laughs> so, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys have been enjoying my video content that I've been putting out. And I am going to try to at least get two, maybe three videos out for you again this week. I know that yesterday you seen a cleaning video. So, um going to have a little bit of a, an everything video here, um, kind of more of a day in the life, I guess, but there will be some cleaning, there will be some cooking, and it'll be all included in this video, and I hope that you all enjoy it. Leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up on this video so I know you guys are enjoying it, and I'm going to be looking for my ride to come, and we can get out of here. Just sitting here for a moment. My friend Danny bought these to try them in. He didn't care for them too much, but I love them. If you have never seen, let me see if I can open these with one hand. I don't know if I can or not, hold on. Let's see, there we go. I'll show you what these look like. They're kind of weird. So they look like a typical nerd's candy on the outside. But when you bite into it, it's a gummy cinder. Mm -mm -mm. They're very addictive to me. They are so good. It reminds me of my teenage days. This was one of my favorite candies when I was a kid. Was nerds. So we are in the door and I brought everything in here. Um, excuse to kitty cat food. I did not buy that today. Um, so Ronnie wanted some zero ginger ale. This is kind of hard to find. I don't know if a lot of people drink it or what, but it's very hard to find. Um, also got some uh, Sam's Club. This is their version of Diet Coke. I drink the Diet Coke. I have a can every day, so I could be far worse. This is my ginormous thing of burger meat. I am going to divide this today. I'm also going to make meatballs and freeze those. That's the plan. In here, we got some chicken patties. Um, so we could have some chicken sandwiches this week. I thought that would be easy fixing. I also got two things. This not in this bag, but I got two things of the seasoned french fries. I can make some regular sausage for breakfast. Um, let's see what else I got. Some Italian style breadcrumbs. Some crushed pineapple. I think it's crushed, isn't it? Yes, crushed. Sometimes I buy the wrong one on accident also got some vanilla pudding. I'm going to make um, my spring cake for whenever company comes, and I knew this stuff wouldn't go bad. 
um, you know. So my camera ran out of storage, so I'm not exactly sure what I filmed. So seasoned fries, the chicken uh, patties, some vanilla pudding, and some pineapple crust. Um, also got me uh, sensitive toothpaste. I have been using whitening toothpaste for a long time and I've been noticing lately that my teeth are super sensitive and um, the dentist highly recommended me to use something that wasn't specified for white whitening as well as this crust crust this crust this crest gum care can you guys tell I'm tired <laughs> and um, Danny I think Danny got Ronnie this soap it smells really really good I like it I like it so much I would use it <laughs> and let's see what else we got here I got some bananas I was going to get some from Aldi the other day but they were so um, ripe that they would have been rotten in a couple of days and I've already got several bananas already in the freezer. Bought this huge thing of cherries. It was a dollar something a pound, and I might have got carried away, but that's okay because I don't feel a bit guilty. Every year I buy a couple bags of cherries when they're in season, and these are my favorite, favorite, favorite. Um, let's see, I got a half a gallon of 2% milk as well as my half and half for my coffee. I don't know if I can get it out of the bag. And then I got, this is the other bag of seasoned fries and I gotta get my freezer stuff in the freezer, but that's the other bag. And then I got a thing of white bread, just white bread, that's it, that's all I bought. I did buy the big jumbo pack. We went to Sam's and had lunch today. <laughs> I had lunch at Sam's twice this week. Um, but yeah, I altered to get my bath tissue. I wasn't out, but I was there. And I also got two cases of water because it is supposed to be 109 degrees tomorrow and it doesn't hurt to have extra water on hand. So bath tissue, two things of water, and what I showed you here is what I bought today. And now I need to get to work and clean out the refrigerator and get this stuff put away. Hello. It's ready. I am trying to measure this meat out as close to one pound bags and I might have gone over just a wee little bit but that's okay I mean I just wanted it to be as close as possible and I will tell you this scale is an absolute godsend to somebody who is visually impaired because it reads it to you not only that it's in large print it speaks very clearly now some of these devices 
they it's very foreign to me sometimes the way they sound i have to listen to it more than once to understand it but it's very very clear and i absolutely love this scale and it will be used a lot especially probably around um the holidays when i'm trying to make things um even in the you know the fall months when i like to bake bread and to make sure that my loaves are all the same size I know I make Easter bread, and I always never get the loaves exactly the same, but with this thing, I'll be able to get it pretty close, and that will be so awesome. But after I get all the meat into the Ziploc bags, now these are freezer bags, and I smash it down flat because I find that in the thawing process, they thaw so much easier and they take up less space in my freezer area. So it is a win-win for me to do it that way. Um, I am trying to save money just like everybody else is. And for my husband and I, a pound of ground beef is like taco night. It's chili for a couple days. Um, it's hamburgers, you know, a couple hamburgers for the two of us. So really and truly, I mean, if I do this, and you got to think too, you know, if you figured out like how much it costs to eat out, it is amazing how much you save by eating at home, just even by making these simple things. And I haven't been doing a whole lot of heavy cooking because it has been so horrendously hot. Um, however, um, I love this and I think, honestly, I think every couple months I'll probably do this. Um, I'm going to see how long this ground beef actually lasts me and I'll keep you updated on it, but this is the first time doing it. So I think it's pretty cool. So I saved a couple pounds of meat in which I placed there in the bowl because I'm going to make some freezer meatballs because I'm not exactly sure and when I'm filming this video when my company will arrive and meatballs are so easy to make ahead of time and put in the freezer and then the day that they come I just empty the meatballs in my crock pot I add the sauce some seasoning and I let it stay on low until they come and then sometimes we'll have meatball subs Sometimes we'll just do spaghetti and meatballs and I'll make some fresh bread. So really and truly, it's very versatile. You could even do my party meatball recipe with these where you put it in the crock pot. It's even amounts of chili sauce and grape jelly, which might seem weird to some people, but it's absolutely amazing. And you know, if I do like a Christmas party or anything, I make that quite frequently. And if you have been following me, you know, I love to make meatballs and I make them quite often. So I'm doing a couple of eggs. And as you can see, I cut some sausage out of the casings. This is just one pack of uh, sausages from the store. A half a can Italian seasoning, uh, breadcrumbs and a couple of eggs and you know, you can make this how you want to make it. Now, if I was making meatballs for my husband and I, I definitely would use the hot sausage. But in this moment, I am using mild sausage because my mom can't really handle anything too, too spicy. And so I'm trying to be respectful and not throw her over the edge when she comes to visit me. Um, so yeah, we're just going to make it with mild sausage. I will tell you what is so phenomenal about making these ahead of time and baking them in the oven is the fact that that sausage seasoning, you know, all marries each other the longer it's together. And so, you know, if you can make these ahead of time and just, you know, let them cool after they come out of the oven, put them in a freezer bag. Um, when you cook these up, they're going to be phenomenal, phenomenal. Now you're going to see that when I make my meatballs up, I use an ice cream scoop. So I'm making pretty nice sized meatballs. You do not have to make this big a meatball. You can, I've made them small meatballs like you would buy at the freezer section in your grocery store. And for that, I would use a cookie scoop. So really it's your preference. 
but um, there's a restaurant that my mom and dad like to eat at, and it's authentic Italian food, and they make really big meatballs, and I think that I make them this way because they do. It's like nostalgic or something. It's kind of funny. But anyways, once I get these rolled up, I put them on a lightly sprayed um, pan, you know, like cookie sheet, and I just cover mine with some foil just to catch any of the drippings from, you know, the hamburger meat, you know, is obviously going to render grease, so you definitely want to have something to catch that. Um, I bake these meatballs on 350 degrees for about 30 minutes, and then you're going to see them when they come out. I'm sorry I didn't get any footage of me actually placing them into the Ziploc bag and you know I'll show that in another video to you guys when I take them out to cook them but yes this is me rolling them up and then you're going to see me pull them out of the oven now you want to allow these meatballs to cool completely before you put them in a plastic bag because it'll burn holes in your bag and besides you don't want to put hot steamy meat in your freezer it'll lower the temperature of everything else and you can cause things to go really badly for yourself. You don't want to do that. But I do want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. I am trying so hard to remember to pick up the camera and to film for you all and to get content out there to all of you that have been like, where have you been? Are you okay? I am fine. I am just so busy. So, so busy. <laughs> I can't even put in the words how busy I am, but I am so, so busy. But the last thing I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to wash bedding. I'm going to call it a day because I am tired and I'm going to get a good night's sleep and then I'm going to hit it again the next day. So until then, would you please leave me a comment and let me know if you all make homemade meatballs and what y'all are doing to, um, you know, beat this heat wave that we've got going through uh, here recently. But I want to say thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you sticking with Heidi's Home. Please subscribe if you are new, and I'll be seeing you all again soon. Take care, and have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful blessed day. Bye, guys.